Welcome to the Student Learning Assessment Quick Tips video on how to use the Teacher Dashboard. In this video, you will learn how to access and set up the SLA using the Teacher Dashboard, and we will go into the student experience a little bit as well. The Student Learning Assessment is available to both teachers and students at public.education.alberta.ca slash assessment. This will bring you to this page on which you will see several items. The top right hand corner you see a rectangular blue box here labeled teacher access. This is where you would go as a teacher to access the teacher dashboard. This section to the left under assessments is the student portal. This is where students would go to access the actual assessment to start it or to do practice questions. Below that you will see the released question section and in the released question you will see questions that have been used in previous years during the pilot uh, years in this case and you can see both digital assessment and performance tasks from those years. These questions are meant to show the typical questions and give some teachers a sense of uh, the difficulty and the range of questions. The practice questions are meant to demonstrate the types of interactions with the computer that students will experience when they take the assessment. Taken together, these two sections, the practice questions and the released questions, will give your students excellent preparation as you go forward in taking this year's student learning assessment. Let's move on to looking at the student learning assessment teacher dashboard by clicking on the blue rectangle upper right corner and you will be prompted to log in. Keep in mind that you are required to have access to the student learning assessment and to get that you need to go to the extranet. There is a quick tips video available that explains how to get that access with the extranet. Once you've figured out that, you simply type in your email address and your password and you should be in. Once you get signed in, you should be presented with a screen that looks very much like this. On the left hand side, you will notice a number of menu items. As of September 1st, 2017, you should see at the top here the assessment reading 2017-18. The two types of assessment are performance tasks and digital assessment. In the performance tasks, we can see the different types of performance tasks available from English literacy down to numeracy and including the French ones as well. By default, the English ones open if you are at an English school. You'll also see an extra tab up here that may or may not appear, depending on whether there is a field test going on at the time. In each one of these performance task areas, you see two different columns, uh, one related to the administration of the, the tests. So there's guidelines, there's some templates, and there's a presentation here to help prepare your class for the task. And under the marking side, there's exemplars and descriptors to help you in your marking. When you go to the digital assessment, you will see that there is an assessment preview available. And when you choose that, you will see examples of the kind of questions that your students will see. This will help you in your preparation for your students taking the exam. When you come in for the first time, you're going to have to set up your classes using the Manage Class Lists area. I'm being prompted to enter a class name. Best strategy is to enter your, uh, your name as a teacher. And it will ask to whom that class should be assigned. Below is a list of all the students who are enrolled in your school at the grade three level if you choose grade three here. If you leave all, you're going to get grade two students, grade one students, etc. So if it does not say three, you need to check it, click it onto three. Now to put kids into the class, it's as easy as figuring out which one's the one you want to add and hitting add. And we go down the list and add as many students as you have in your class. If at some point you realize, oh, Ruta here is in the other class, I'm going to take 
him or her out of my class by hitting the white X on the red square. I also have the ability to search students by name if I'm having trouble finding a particular student. I type in the name, it cuts the list down to only students with that name, and I add him that way. When I'm happy with the list that I've got here on the right, this is my class list, I can hit save and I have created my first class. I can now see over on the left hand side that I have a class created called Mr. Schneider and there's a little indication here, it's a little hard to read, that says that I have eight students in that class. It's a little check for making sure that I got it right. At this point I can proceed to selecting the assessments that I want to assign to those students in that class. I have the option of choosing French Immersion or Francophone and if I leave it at English, these are the two options. So I could start with just English literacy and then do numeracy at a later time. But most likely I want to do both of them at some point here, so I can select both of those. I am now being given the option to indicate an estimated date and time that the students will write the test. This is completely optional, and the point of it is to enable Alberta Education to provide school authorities with an idea of who is writing the assessments when, if in the case where there might be some limitations on devices available and bandwidth, etc. So if this is something that could be helpful for you, you click on the calendar and you pick a date sometime during the assessment period, which will be after August 2017. You can do it for both of them. and you say done. At this point you will see now that there are two assessments, one in English Literacy 3 and another in Numeracy 3, that are available ready to start for Mr. Schneider's class. At this point I'm going to go ahead and click Administer Assessment and it will bring up the Active Dashboard. This is the dashboard that tells you the current status of students writing or not writing the assessment. You'll see at the top here that this is the class for Mr. Schneider and that in Mr. Schneider's class there are eight students and here are the eight students listed here. These green check marks indicate that the student is participating or not participating. So if I want to indicate that Rashid here is not going to be participating today, I just pull down the select list and I select the red X and the reason I might do this is that I was expecting the class to write the, the evaluation today, um, but Rashid's absent, so I'm just going to put him down as not participating today. Put him back. Also available in this screen, you'll see that you can preview each one of the questions, sets of questions in the testlet, just like you could over here in the assessment preview. The main control in this screen is over here on the left, the start assessment. At this point, I'm assuming that I have all my students in the class with some technology in front of them logged in and ready to go here. And at that point, I would hit the start assessment. If at any point during the process here, the students are interrupted in their writing for recess or a fire drill or some unforeseen circumstances, we can hit pause assessment. And at this point, the students can no longer access the questions. When it's safe to do so, or when everybody's ready, you can once again hit Resume Assessment. At this point, we're going to have a look at what the student experience would be on their computers as they start the assessment. To get students going, they would as well need to go to public.education.alberta.ca slash assessment and once they get there, you want to have them click the Start Assessment button. At this point, students will need to know their Alberta student number, which you can give them from your teacher dashboard. The student would simply type in their nine-digit number and press Go. In this case, a red box pops up indicating that no assessments have been found for that Alberta student number. This is caused by the fact that the teacher has put the assessment either on pause or has not started it yet. So the teacher would need to go back to the teacher dashboard and start the assessment. Once that has been done, the student can simply press go again. And because the assessment has been started or resumed, I now get this second evaluation that says, please confirm that you are who you think you are. The student clicks yes, and we're in. 
At this point, the student goes right ahead and hits Start Assessment and is taken to the Audio and Video Check. It's very important that each student go through the Audio and Video Check as the test does contain elements of rich multimedia, such as audio and video. Checking is simply a matter of clicking the Play button. Yeah! Doo -doo -da. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> did you hear that? Eh. Did you see that? Yeah. And assuming that they did hear it, they would click yes. But if they didn't, just for the sake of argument, they click no. They get this red box here showing that there's something wrong and that's why they must have clicked no. And if you go back to the teacher dashboard, that student will show that they have an audio or video issue reported. Once the problem has been resolved, the student merely needs to run the test yeah. again. And at any point, as long as it's working, they can hit yes. Okay, so now the student is ready to start writing the assessment. You'll notice that a couple of things here. One's uh, just a confirmation that this is English Literacy 3. You'll see four parts to the assessment. There might be five parts. In this case, there's four and only one of them has a live hover over. So these three have been locked at this point. The student is not able to write those testlets. These testlets are presented sequentially, A, B, C, D, but you do have some control over which order the students write the, te write the testlets using the teacher dashboard. In this screen, you'll notice that you have all of the first column by default is unlocked. These other ones are locked. If you wish for any individual student to do part B before part A, then you simply open up that student by clicking on the lock and saying unlock. Now you'll notice that that student is locked in the part A, but ready to go in part B. What this will show now is that part A is locked and part B is available to the student. At any point, the teacher can check on the progress of their students by simply hitting the refresh button in the upper right corner, which shows that Caesar has now finished Part E testlet. The student learning assessment is designed to proceed at the student's own pace and rate. And as such, as the student completes one testlet, the next one will become available. In this case, after Part B was completed, Part A becomes unlocked. Normally it goes sequential, but it will always choose the lowest letter as the next testlet. What you see on the right-hand side in this right-hand column is the overall number of questions that the student has completed in the assessment as a total. So this includes some from testlet B and some from testlet A. So the question is, how many have they completed in testlet A? This can be determined by clicking on the pencil and you will see that one has been answered and a second one is currently in. So they are currently in the process of answering the second question. We can hit OK on that to clear that off. Once the teacher is satisfied that the students have completed the assessment to the, to the best of their ability, it is up to the teacher to indicate that it's ready to be assessed. And it's as simple as clicking on the Mark Assessment button here on the left. A warning will come up saying that a number of students have not finished, if such is the case. And you can go back at that point and encourage students to answer some more questions. Or you can simply press the Generate Report, and it will say that the assessment has been submitted. And the results of that assessment will show up in the report section within 24 hours. So we click on there and go to Mr. Schneider. This is where you would see the results of that assessment. Now, at this point, none are available because I just clicked it two minutes ago. Um, so typically you would come back tomorrow and you would see the report would be in this space right here. It is possible to undo a submission of a report. To do so, you need to go back to the digital assessment, dashboard, Mr. Schneider, and you'll see a blue box now uh, exists here. And one of the options is to undo the submission if I don't want to generate a report. One final feature to be mentioned is the feedback button that's in the upper right corner of all screens. If at any point you would like to pass some feedback on to Alberta Education, simply click the button, indicate what your concerns are, and click send. At this point you have an option of either maintaining anonymity, depending on the sort of comment you're making, 
or if you wish to have feedback provided with a response from Alberta Education, you need to click Yes. If you wish to contact us at any point to express concerns or to get help to complete your administration, you can reach us by phone or email. There are people standing by during the school year, during school hours, to help you out if you're experiencing any kind of issues with connection or just the general administration of the assessment. Thank you for watching this quick tips video on how to use the teacher dashboard.